Welcome back to the show. In case you missed parts one and two of this series, links are down below. I would love to see a video like this from you, especially with Komodo, also even a comparison of L-Zone versus Geoscope, and how these values correspond to your readings on the light meter. Okay, well, we already know that the light meter is under by a full stop because we just did that test. Let's see how this EL zone compares to the geoscope and how the geoscope compares to what the meter is showing me. So this should get really interesting. So let me take a shot of the uh, monitor now, just so we can recall what the EL zone is showing us. And this is a cool thing too, because you can see both the big monitor and the actual EL zone. I'm going to flick the EL zone off and I'm going to shoot out the geoscope via the small HD. So here we go. All I got to do is turn on my tools here and I already have it ready to go and turn on SDI tools. So it's on both monitors now because uh, I'm sending it out via SDI. This is my biggest qualm with the geoscope. All of the colors are too close to each other. It's varying shades of green to red, okay, on the overside. And then the underside is varying shades of blue to purple to black or something like that, right? Uh, and we'll, we'll jump on the Komodo and I'll show you that in a minute. But this is the problem I have with the geoscope, especially for someone like me. You guys know why I even started using the color meter a couple years back. It's because I suffer from a huge deficiency in my eyeballs. Nicholas Reffin actually has the same thing. Yay, that's awesome. But yes, it's a red, green color blind. It's pretty wicked. So that's why I had to lean on the color meter. That's why I go very neutral with my color always. Um, and it's a constant struggle. The problem is that's why I can't tell the differences of all these different reds, or I'm sorry, <laughs> see, I can't tell the difference of all these different greens because it just looks like a big blob to me. I think it is a big blob because of the way I mapped it, because I was trying to map it a certain way. This is where the geoscope convolutes things too much for me. And this is where the EL zone just is chef's kiss the way it was designed. So let me jump on the Komodo and show you. All right, so we'll do a video in here. So forgive me, this is cell phone, so. I apologize, I know, I suck. But okay, let's get in here, let's back up and I'll show you the problem with the geoscope here. Like I was saying, these are varying levels of blue to purple to aqua, I guess. 11, just so you guys know, 11 is middle gray on a geoscope, okay? From what I recall. Let me turn this one on, I had, okay. So there you'll see, it goes from green to red and then cyan to purple, I guess. Uh, you have to forgive me. Again, guys, I, I cannot see colors. So these numbers here, so if, so if 11 is middle gray, I mean, dude, I, I can't tell the difference between 10, 11, 12, 13, none of them. It doesn't change to me until I start, well, definitely 15. 15, I can tell is a different hue. 14 is a tad different, but hell no, dude. The rest of these, there's no way I can tell. And this is why it sucks because nine and 10 is what I need to know for darker skin tones. Well, yeah, clearly I can tell nine from 10, but the problem is I can't tell 10 from middle gray, which is 11. I can't tell 10 from 12, which is where lighter skin tones would be. I can't tell uh, 10 from 13 where uh, even paler skin tones would be. You see what I mean? This is, this is useless to me for someone with my hue deficiency. But for you guys, maybe this is helpful, but I couldn't imagine how this is helpful to you versus something as clear and concise as the EL zone. So with me, I can't use this because I can't even make sense of what I'm looking at when it's on the monitor. Okay, folks, I didn't want to leave you on a cliffhanger there because I realized the tutorial just kind of ended. So I want us to just look at these, these images side by side and, and just look at this the reality of this. Now, I do need to clarify a few things here. So like these areas, these were all turned off because I didn't care about the, the lower tones. What I had enabled on the geoscope, and this is another thing, I hate that they let you turn it on and off, right? But, but I guess sometimes it's okay. I was just trying to focus on half a stop under to two stops over. So this, with all of those engaged, right? All of those are on, this is still super blobby. Why does that? And then look at the EL zone. The EL zone is clearly defined. Here's another issue I have with the geoscope, okay? They have it broken down into 16 stops. And I guess this is like the ego of red, right? Like, because, you know, it's 16 stops, right? But uh, is it though? Like, it, okay, and I don't care if you believe it or not, and I don't care if it is or it's not. I don't care about that. Like, why do we need it broken down like that? when the EL zone is just so simple, like 12 stops total, like that's all that matters. And the reality is too, like my eyes are super <laughs> fuck in terms of color blindness, okay? And I can still look at the EL zone. Something else that makes it really handy is I get a <laughs> chart with the EL zone, right? Like the EL zone gives me a graph that I can quickly just look at, okay? And as screwed up as my eyeballs are, I can sit here and look at the EL zone image and go, okay, 
all of this is one stop over. This little, little hot part on my cheek is about two stops over. I can see this uh, half a stop over as it turns into direct middle gray because middle gray is actually middle gray. It's actually a gray color uh, that even a colorblind guy can see. And then it goes half a stop under, then one stop under, and then all of this is two stop under. And even my Rembrandt is clearly defined and we, I can see the fall off. Why can't I see the fall off of the Rembrandt over here? Why, like, it, it, what is going on? You know, like, I don't understand why the geoscope was designed the way it was. Even if you had perfect vision that it had no hue deficiency in your eyeballs whatsoever, you cannot sit there and tell me that this geoscope is easier to understand than this EL zone. I would never believe you. The EL zone is just a one quick glance. Boom, I know exactly where it's at. My other issue here is, why a why is this pure white? Not even the 16th stop is pure white. So what is this? I don't understand. This is what I mean. It's too convoluted. Maybe I'm just too stupid to figure it out. I'm not too proud to admit when I'm too dumb either. So maybe it's like my colorblindness is, is causing enough roadblock for me not to grasp this. Either way, I don't ever want to use it. This EL zone has been a godsend to me for so many different reasons. I have a perfect graph here. I have a perfect chart. Even with my crazy eyeballs, I can tell immediately what each stop difference is because it's not crazy. And a lot of it is it's not broken down into 16 different stops. Why are we just like, it just seems like they took a really simple thing and made it super complicated with the geoscope, right? Like the geoscope is so complicated. And I've always thought about that even back with the DSMC2 bodies. I was always like, why is this so convoluted? Like why, like, I don't get it. I don't get it. It seems like they thought everybody was going to be like this uh, non-colorblind engineer when they look at this shit. And it's like, no, this is perfect, right? Like, because what I love what Ed Lockman did with the EL Zone, he took the concept of false color and he combined it with geoscope, right? That, that, uh, if you ask me, that's what he did, right? <laughs> like, like that's, that's literally what he did. He took the geoscope thing and he made it better because he combined like false color kind of ideas with the geoscope and thus was created Ed Lockman's EL zone. I'm not saying that's what he did. Don't, don't, uh, God, please don't post that anywhere. But you know, like I'm just pulling shit out of my ass, right? Like, because the reality is, is like, this is just boom. I can instantly see what's going on. This over here, dude, no, thank you. I, I it's like, you know, in a world where so many things are already complicated, why we need to make our tools as simple and streamlined as possible, regardless if you're colorblind or not. Um, again, I, I will never believe you if you prefer the geoscope over this Yale zone. And also, I, I, I don't think it is more accurate than the Yale zone. And the reason I say that is because of what's going on with this window. I recognize white as pure clipping. There is no pure white on the geoscope color chart, which is just weird to me, but you know, so it's like they didn't keep any like normal concepts <laughs> with the exposure tools. Again, this is what I keep talking about because if I look at this, I go, well, that to me would signal that it's blown, but it's not. I don't even have any of the traffic lights on. You know what I mean? Like none of that, like there's nothing hitting uh, the goalposts. Like, so what, why is this pure white? And then it goes, well, I guess maybe I had the 16th one turned off and I didn't know it, but why would it turn it pure white? That would make it so confusing on the day. Do you see what I mean? Like, and so that's where the EL zone wins in my book. So sadly, I wasn't able to do anything with the light meter during on the day during that tutorial because I, I, I look at the geoscope and it just looks like Kermit like vomited on the screen. Like I can't make heads or tails of it. Uh, whereas the eel zone is just, I mean, I mean, look, you choose, right? <laughs> like, like you choose w which one you like here. Clearly, I think I know what the majority of you would choose. Uh, ding, ding, ding. We got a winner. You know what I mean? It's the eel zone, right? There's, there's no doubt about it. The eel zone is going to win. There's no way I could start to act like I could tell what was going on with the geoscope when I just can't. My eyeballs just can't. It literally gives me a headache just looking at it right now, uh, quite honestly. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to compare the meter to the geoscope. I will take half the blame for that because I, I can't see the colors. But I would put the other half on red of being like, M could you guys like hire Ed for the day <laughs> and just be like, can you help us sort this geoscope thing out or form like Voltron a, a little bit there and, and figure it out? I've never used a geoscope. I, I tried to back uh, on the few times. I did, I did uh, operate and run a few shows with the DSMC two bodies and I played with the geoscope a little bit but even but you know it's it, it's always been convoluted to me thank you all uh, for for tuning in if you missed part one and two please 
by all means, check those out. The link is down below. Check out the Patreon if you want more of this type of stuff. The Patreon is where I go really hardcore in tutorials, breaking down cinematography stuff, breaking down my jobs, breaking down, breaking down members of the group, breaking down their work, helping them uh, do pre-production for the jobs they have coming up. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Ever since EL Zone has been implemented in the small HD, I have really gotten away from using the light meter. As you saw, I still do use it to figure out contrast ratios, figure out my edge light. The edge light is the big one. Really useful in uh, setting all the lights for a green screen or some situation like that. Obviously, there's still a place for meters. <laughs>